already filmed this. <laughs> no, um, apparently I did the whole show. Was it recording? <laughs> and let me tell you, it was a great show. You should have seen it. Um, I will try to recreate it. Oh my God, where do, where do I begin? Okay, I hope you guys had a great Monday. I had to work a half a day. Um, it was not terribly busy. Not a lot of phone calls. Uh, there's like this great mystery surrounding the, the COVID vaccine. Like, who do you call to get an appointment for your second vaccine? Nobody knows. And they're not telling us. We keep asking administration, who do you call? Ghostbusters. No, they don't tell us. Um, so, so I have to tell, I, I, I actually, I didn't get a lot of phone calls about that, but I did get one. And the doctor says, you know what? I'm just going to walk over there. And I said, you know, I'm not telling you what to do, but if that was, if you, if I were you, I would walk over there. I, I don't know what happened. I guess that's what he did because they were giving them out in the library. Now, I don't know who they were giving these shots to because nobody could call the shot line or the appointment line to make an appointment. First of all, because we don't know what the number is. And second of all, because they, I think the system was down. Okay, you know, it was down before New Year's and I don't think they ever fixed it. So anyway, but I stayed busy at work all the way up until like the last half hour. And then I decided I'm going to get my coloring out. So here's what I colored. Do, 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 do. I got my gnome book out. Thank you, Jerry. She's such a sweetheart. A lot of these pages have a lot of detail in the coloring. Like, look at the detail in this work. Like, a lot of detail. I mean, one of these pages is going to take me a while. So, but this is where I started. Look at the knockers on these women. Good night. Holy moly. And the shoes. <laughs> wow. 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 They've got big old honking noses and big old knockers. Um, I don't know who this artist is, but... Oh, De Denise Klett. K-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Well, and I don't know if that's a... It could be Dennis. It could be Denise. I don't know. But whoever it is, he thinks that gnome female gnomes have big knockers. Because <laughs> every single picture of a female gnome... She has got some big old boobs. Anyway, so that was my attempt. And yesterday I went to Joanne's. Uh, there'll be part one, part two. This is part one. This was, I went down the sticker aisle, which they're almost out of everything. Um, since that last sale, they just haven't restocked. So these little sticker books were on sale. This is stickers that you can put into your planner. So these were on sale. They're usually $20, $19.99. Um, some of them, not all of them. Um, well, all of them were on sale to buy to get one free. But some of them were marked down to $9.99, including this one, because I didn't want to buy a whole bunch. So I just got this one for $9.99. And it's called Budget 682 Pieces. And it has all these really cool stickers in here, including um, what I really loved was the, um, you can put like little dollar signs for payday, which is super cute. And um, budget stickers, uh, well, that, I said that, like when is a bill due, um, a lot of emphasis on savings. Um, a word that is has traditionally not in my vocabulary, but uh, given my advanced age, <laughs> I should probably put it in my vocabulary. <laughs> so, and then these stickers at the beginning are really cute. Tell your money exactly where to go and you'll not wonder where it went. That's my goal for the year. I want to tell it where to go. Because traditionally, uh, or historically with me, it just flies out of my bank account. Well, apparently, I told it to go somewhere, and I don't remember I told it to go somewhere. But this is here to remind me. So I've been keeping up with this. I'm not going to write in it every day or um, on camera, because that would take too long. I'm, I'm actually using it as 
uh, sort of a historical thing as well so that I write down what what I worked on see like here they had a little gas sticker I don't know if you can see that I put what I spent in gas so I need to go through and figure out what my expenses were for last week and put them on the sticker but then yesterday I wrote down like on the morning show what was the national day I talked about because I always have several to choose from and what history event I talked about because again I have several to choose from so that next year on January 4th I will talk about something else um, and then what I did which I'm not going to tell you because I'm not ready to confess yet but and then I need to write down there because I also worked I came home it was such like a normal day I came home from work at the normal time greeted the dogs put some dinner in the oven um you know some chicken and some potatoes and carrots i roasted some potatoes and carrots and oh. anyway um this is my new year's hat loom knitted it this was you know my sparkly hat for new year's um so i put everything in the oven and then i came in the craft room and finished up my section then i went and ate dinner and watched the news and then i started to work on my loom and i said no I'm gonna go, well, I hadn't quite finished the section. I said, I'm gonna go finish this section while I listen to my book and diamond paint until seven o'clock. So I came in here, finished this section. It wasn't quite seven o'clock, so I went on ahead into the fourth section. So I'm in the fourth section now. Um, and <coughs> Every time I go in the office, I get sick. What is that all about? I think that office is toxic. So then after I, uh, at seven, I went, got my pajamas on, sat down and uh, finished my row on the loom. Same color. I'm not, because I'm doing 20 degree increments on the loom. So I have a 20 to 40 degree uh, increment. Um, so it'll be the same color today because it's going to be warmer today. Like the low today should be 35. I'm doing lows. So it's going to be much warmer today. So low today should be like 35. So on the crochet blanket, I will actually be able to go up a color to a warmer color. So I'm going to have at least one row of that warmer color. And then the, the rest of the week is supposed to be at the bottom of the chart, like less than 20 degrees. So I will be able to go down to the bottom of both charts and put in that the coldest yarn that I picked um, for at least three days the rest of the week. And they say there's a chance of snow. Oh, I love it. Um, yeah, so I want to put all that in the planner, but I'm not going to do that on camera, but I will write all that down. And I wrote down the low for yesterday, which was 29 degrees, just under the increment where I would change. Um, so today, like I said, it's probably the low, they think it'll be 35, um, but the rest of the week below 20 degrees. So that's my little planner and it's keeping me, it's keeping me, I'm having fun with it. I hope you guys are having fun with yours. Um, I don't know what it will accomplish. Maybe I'll get organized. Maybe I'll get rich because I am reading The Secret. And I was going to tell you The Secret, but I'm, I'm sworn to secrecy. Anyway, I'm going to be rich because I'm going to find out where I told that money to go. Yes, I am. Now, what was I doing before I was interrupted? And I figured out that I wasn't recording. Oh, well. So we could talk about what national day it is. It is National Whipped Cream Day. Now, do not put in the comments. You don't have to put in the comments. You can put in the comments. Okay, I just said three different things. Um, what you like to do with whipped cream. I like it on food. I, I like it on ice cream. Now, do you prefer the canned stuff, the Ready Whip, 
or do you like the Cool Whip? Now, I'm personally, I prefer Cool Whip. Unless it's a whipped cream that I make myself. Like if I take some heavy cream and make my own whipped cream. But then you have to eat it like right away. Because it just doesn't last. Um, so I'll do that like if I have family over or pumpkin pie make some homemade whipped cream. But you can put all kinds of flavors in it. Um, cool Whip come, used to come in some different flavors. Strawberry and chocolate. I don't know if it still does. But. I like Cool Whip. I don't know why. I, and I like it on ice cream. Now, if y'all have ever done anything risque and rated X with your whipped cream, um, and I know you have. Don't, don't tell me you haven't. I know you have. I haven't. And here's why. It's a mess. And then you got to take a shower. <laughs> I know. I'm boring. No, I probably have. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't remember. I'm sure I have. I'm sure my ex... See, my ex-husband... Oh, I, I should... Rest rest in peace. Um, he wasn't very adventurous. Yeah, let's just say that. Okay? But I've had a lot of adventure since then. And I, I just don't know if it ever involved whipped cream. <laughs> I, I really don't. I really don't know. But... I'm sure that y'all could tell me some stories that make my toes curl with the whipped cream. So, it's actually the anniversary of the invention of Ready Whip, which is the canned stuff. Um, the founder, Aaron Lapin, and they called him Bunny. I don't know why they called him Bumpy Bunny, but if he invented Ready Whip in 1948 on this day in history. So um, it became a very popular dessert around the world, but it goes back to the 16th century. They used to take like sticks and whip it up, you know. Can you imagine? It's your turn to make the whipped cream. Oh, God. It's probably like a whole day process. Oh, God, I got to go make whipped cream. But it's just one of those things where, you know, oh, it's so worth it in the end, I guess, you know. <laughs> the English originally named whipped cream snow cream, and sometimes they still call it snow cream. Um, so you can use hashtag whipped cream day on social media if you would like to. Um, that'll be interesting. What did you do with whipped cream? Oh, so Alice is coming along nicely here. The year of Alice. So let's do this day in history. Oh, <laughs> so in the colonies, you know, just if you can imagine this, you know, you, you leave England, you come to the U.S., there's no divorce. No one has ever divorced anybody in this country that we know of. But on January 5th, 1643, the first record of a legal divorce took place. Anne Clark of the Massachusetts Bay Colony filed for a divorce from her husband for abandonment. He just left her, left her for another woman. He had two kids with her, with Anne, and then he decided, mm, I'm out of here. So he leaves and um, goes with another woman, has two kids with her. And um, <laughs> the court said, you know, are you willing to go be with your wife? And he's like, no, I'm not. So they said, okay, you get a divorce. Um, it was that simple. But that was the first record of a divorce uh, in in the U.S. that we know it. And now, I don't know what the Native Indians do when one, you know, when you get married and then you don't 
agree with the other one. I don't know. Um, you know, if you guys know, let me know because uh, that's an interesting, you know, it's probably something very, very different. But, you know, here in the U.S. or um, in the colonies now, you can get a divorce when your husband decides he's had enough and goes out with another woman. So, also on this day in history, where is it? Where is it? Do, 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 do. The New York Yankees purchase Babe Ruth from the Boston Red Sox for 125000 which if you um, account for inflation would be about $1.6 million today. Um, plus about 300000 in loans to the owner of the Boston Red Sox. So that was quite a bit of money. But then they turned around to Babe Ruth and they said, we're only going to pay you $10,000 a year. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Because he now he knows how much he's worth. So he asked for more money. Now, they don't say how much more money they gave him. But he went on to set, um, you know, he was on fire. He, you know, the... The Yankees started winning World Series after that, and he was breaking records, and, you know, poor old Boston Red Sox. <laughs> what is with this? This does not, it completely came out of my pen. Where is it? Where's the mud? I think I need to get some more in here. Okay. It's in there now. Um, that's a lot of money, huh? Even ten thousand a year, I don't know what that would be with inflation, but that's a lot of money. Several hundred thousand, I would guess. I learned that a long time ago. I had this friend. Um, I worked as an attorney in this one law firm, and my law clerk was she was going to law school. She was my clerk. Nice, beautiful young girl, very pretty. And she, uh, she bartended at night down in Miami. And um, so she came in my office. She's like, uh, I'm going to lunch with my boyfriend. I'm like, oh, okay. Who is he? You know, what's his name? She's like, oh, I can't tell you. I'm like, you can't tell me. Why can't you tell me? And she's like, well, he's, he's, um, he's a famous baseball player. I'm like, what? And um, so I laughed and I said, who? And she's like, oh, no, no, I can't. I really can't say anything. And um, I said, well, is it Dontrell Williams? And she looked at me with this horrified look on her face. And she's like, oh, how did you know? And I said, well, because if I were going to date a baseball player, it would be Dontrell Williams. And she and she admitted it, that, yes, I, that's who I'm dating. And I was stunned because I was totally guessing. Like, I just like Dontrell Williams. I think he's cool. Um, I don't know what, he was a very famous pitcher for the Marlins for, for a long time. So, why am I telling this story? <laughs> but she ends up marrying him. I go to their wedding. Oh, what an event. Oh, my God. So, she married into money. Gorgeous wedding. Gorgeous, gorgeous wedding. Why am I telling you this story? Oh, okay, because but th that's when, um, and it was really funny because that same day that, you know, I, I guessed who her boyfriend was, I go back to work and I go in my office and uh, I'm sitting there working and there's a knock on the door and she comes in with Dondra Williams. Oh my God. He's standing in my doorway and he gives me an autographed baseball and I'm just, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> speechless but the reason I, I brought that up is because um, after I became friends with her and Dontrell I I figured out that you know when these ball players sign with these major league teams for the for the first their rookie years they don't make very much money like really not much money not much um, and then when things start happening with their career that's when they make more money. Now, Dontrell, I think his first few years made very little money. And then as soon as he became famous, he made a lot of money. He was on the World Series winning. The Mar when the Marlins won the World Series, he was on their team. 
Um, and I think they're still married today. I think they have some uh, little girls. You know, I, I, I lost touch with them, but um, I'm sure he doesn't play baseball anymore because that was years ago. But yeah, that was a fun little story. Yeah. Yes, I've met a famous person. It, it was just really, really funny. Funny coincidence, right? I, sometimes these drills stay on the... You diamond paint it, you put it down, and you go to get another one, and it's still on there, right? Oh, my word. Um, what else can we talk about? <laughs> I already had this show done. <laughs> I know. So the coffee's good this morning. I... This is a Pioneer Woman Cup. Now, where I, I don't know where I got it from. I'm guessing I, mean, I got it at Walmart. That's who sells Pioneer Woman stuff. I must have liked it and saw it and bought it. I don't remember. I don't know. So, I, you know, I went to bed last night. I finished the, the loom. I finished the crochet uh, blanket, you know, the row. And then I worked on my hooded um, scarf. Uh, I'm hoping I have enough yarn for that. I don't know. I think I will. But it's going to be very close. <laughs> um, I haven't started the second skein yet, but I'm, I haven't started the hood yet either. I'm still working on the scarf. I'm on row, I just finished row seven of 14 for the scarf and, and I and then you start the hood. So I'm thinking I might need to order one more skein of that yarn. Hmm, I don't know. It is 9.15 and I'm still recording. It's okay though. I don't have to go into the office today, so that's a blessing. Because every time I go into that stinking office, I don't feel good the next day. Today I woke up and I felt feverish. I don't know why. But I said, no, no, come on. You get out of bed, get going. But yesterday felt like such a normal day. You know, I came home from work. I fed the dogs, you know, let them out to do their thing. I made dinner while I diamond painted. It felt like a normal day. Yeah, and then I watched the news and, you know, and I, it, it, but today is, we're back to the COVID stuff. Yeah, today we're, you know, back to social distancing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not that I want to go back to work in an office. I really don't. I love, love, love working from home. Like We can do that all the time. I love it because I kind of make up my own hours. Um, but I, I just, I did like the feeling of normalcy, you know, I, uh, stopped at Joanne's on the way to work, picked up a few items. I'll show you the rest of the items tomorrow. Um, went to work, you know, I went to Sonic, got a burger, an iced tea, went to work. I got to see my friend. Um, she worked the morning shift. That was her last day. She's due. She's having a baby. She's due in a couple of weeks. And she just looks so cute with her belly. Um, and I'm so excited for her because, you know, when the last time we worked in the office together, we she's the one that she and I used to take walks and stuff. And, you know, every month she'd say, oh, it didn't happen this month. It didn't happen this month. And then we go out on this, you know, we go home to work from this COVID and boom, she gets pregnant. <laughs> that was the key. That was the ticket. Send her home. Um, but she's so happy. She's so happy because this is her first, obviously. Um, I'm so excited for her. I remember those days, you know, being pregnant with your first baby and I remember after I had Ryan, panicking. I'm like, oh, holy shit, I don't know what to do with this kid. What do I do? And I read like Dr. What was it? Dr. Spock? You guys have no idea what I'm talking about, unless you're my age. There was a book that everybody read for years, Dr. Spock. And you, he, that was the Bible of how to take care of your baby. And I read that thing cover to cover like six times. 
um, God, I don't even think it's in print anymore. Is it? I don't know. Let's see. Dr. Was it, is Do it's not Dr. Spock. Dr. Spock is from, <laughs> that's from Star Trek. What was it? Dr. No, what was it? No, <laughs> it was Dr. Spock. Dr. Spock's baby and child care. Benjamin Spock. You can buy one used on uh, from thriftbooks.com. It was Dr. Spock. So Dr. Spock, oh my God. The Common Sense Book of Baby and Child Care. Spock on Spock, Decent and Indecent. Dr. Spock's The First Two Years. A Better World for Our Children. Those are all the books that he wrote. Now, he passed away in 1998. So, I think now everybody reads the book, What to Expect When You're Expecting. So, probably a better book. Because there was some old school stuff in Dr. Spock's book, I'm sure. Um, this is, what was the revolutionary message of Benjamin Spock's book? Uh, Spock emphasizes that ultimately the parents' natural loving care for their children is most important. He reminds parents to have confidence in their abilities and to trust their common sense. His practice as a pediatrician had proven to him that parents' instincts were usually best. So it was a good book to read if you were just having a baby. Like, I'm like, oh, that's what I do. Okay, trust my instincts, yes. Because um, <laughs> I didn't trust my instincts. I was only 19, um, you know, it was just before, it was in October, just two months before my 20th birthday, but I was like, ah, I've got this baby, what do I do with it? And I feel like my friend's going to be like that, but she's got a bunch of sisters. Um, I think she'll be just fine. She'll be just fine. Yeah. Oh gosh, guys, I gotta go to work, gotta go to work, 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 work. It is Tuesday, Tuesday. Um, so it's today I will work and I will, I don't know. It's probably going to be the same thing as yesterday. Diamond painting. I, um, I have not, I still have sledding into town that I have not finished. I'm going to, uh, you know, on Saturday, I want my social media day off. I'm going to work on it on Saturday. Um, someone mentioned in a comment that they were going to put away their um, their Chuck Pence and, and just their winter one and just get it out next year, which that's not a bad idea. It really isn't. Um, I think if you roll it up, it'll be just fine next year. But I kind of want to finish mine. I'm almost there. Um, I think, you know, I my goal is to finish one work in progress every month. So this will, I want to get this one done by the end of January. And I think that's realistic. If I work on it on Saturdays, um, I'll get it done. Um, and then next month's work in progress, uh, I don't know. Oh, guys, please don't forget, if you're interested in signing up for the Mystery Diamond Painting event, the third one, um, down in... I have uh, down. I have penned it to the top of the Crafting Journey Facebook group, and it is also in the description of last Sunday's video, um, my live video. You'll find it in that description. It is a Google form. It's just a couple, a, a few questions. Fill it out, and you will be entered into the Mystery Diamond Painting. Now, the reason I'm asking for the form is I. I do the matchups and rather just rather than just kind of do it randomly I want to read what each person has to say how much each person wants to spend what companies they want to use and try to match them up based on their interest uh, those kind of things so um, we've got over 20 people signed up now so I'm really excited but you have until January 24th to sign up um, and I think it's going to be a really cool event. Um, so guys, uh, I got to go to work. I have wasted enough time this morning. I, this, I never consider this a waste of time, but filming it without the camera on was a waste of time. <laughs> and oh my God, I told the best story. I was, I told you, I, was re I talked about, I am listening to Nora Roberts book, The Awakening. And 
uh, it's written in parts. And part one is like total reality, you know. And part two, she goes through the door into the fey reality. So I was talking about how um, I was actually born into a vampire family. I was born in Mystic Falls. Now, I can't tell you where Mystic Falls is because nobody knows. It's a secret. Um, but <laughs> um, my real parents gave me to my parents because my dad was in the army and they knew my dad would travel around all over the world and they would never be able to find me. N none of the vampires could find me. So I would be safe in the real world. So uh, I have been moving around ever since. I've lived in France, um, all over this country. I just move. That's what I do. That's I'm, you know, and I do it so the vampires don't find me. And now I'm in this cute little house in Wichita. The vampires will never find me here. Um, if they do find me, they'll take me back to which uh, to Mystic Falls, and. Uh, Damon is who I was really meant to be with. Um, do you, but have you ever noticed how I really don't age? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the vampire genes. Yes. Anyway, I'm being silly. <laughs> Guys, have a great Tuesday. I love you all. And